The Earth is completely covered by a thin, rocky outer layer called the crust. There are two types of crust, continental crust and oceanic crust. Continental crust is the part of the Earth's crust that contains the continents. Oceanic crust is the part of the Earth's crust that is beneath the ocean. Both crusts contain a variety of geographic features, including tall mountain ranges, deep valleys, and plains. Mid-ocean ridges are mountain ranges on the ocean floor. Trenches are deep ocean valleys that typically form where oceanic crust meets the continental crust. Both ridges and trenches are the sites of volcanic, volcanic and earthquake activity. In fact, many islands, including the Hawaiian Islands, are really volcanoes that have risen above the surface of the ocean. In Activity 2, students explore the structure and composition of the Earth's crust, in particular, the geographic features of the ocean floor. This activity will take about 40 minutes, followed by a 30-minute session the following day. The vocabulary introduced in this activity is continental crust, mid-ocean ridge, ocean floor, ocean crust, and trench. For this activity from the kit, you will need one aluminum container for each team of four, one tub of modeling compound, and masking tape. In addition to the kit materials, you will need to supply a plastic knife, a blue washable marker, paint brushes, paints, and cups with water. You also need to supply activity sheet two. Building on activity one, students review and relate the shell of the egg to the Earth's crust and are questioned to help them realize that the entire Earth is covered by the crust, including the ocean floor. Tell students that the Earth's crust is not the same thickness throughout. Help them understand this by thinking about how mountains would have a thicker crust than a valley. Write the terms oceanic crust and continental crust. Tell the students that the layer of crust beneath the oceans is called the oceanic crust. The layer of crust that contains the continents is called continental crust. We're going to pass out an activity sheet, activity sheet two, Johanna, and we're going to have the students look at that, but we're also going to have them describe things that they would see on the oceanic crust and things that they, uh, continental crust, and things that they would see on the ocean floor and have them describe that. Uh, we might even use a diagram like this because we do want students to realize that even though the oceanic crust is thinner than the continental crust and we can see mountains, that the continental crust is significant significantly thicker and deeper than mm -hmm. the oceanic crust. So let's take a look and what are some terms that we're going to be looking at to label on our worksheet? Well, I see continent and ocean floor, mid-ocean ridge, trench, and island. Okay, so there's some terms on there that they're not familiar with, such as mid-ocean ridge. Mm -hmm. And so we want to explain to the students, um, they might have heard the term ridge before with a popular potato chip that mm -hmm. has a ridge. You know, there's some mountains that like the Blue Ridge Mountains. Exactly. And so that we've got um, mid-ocean ridges are like smaller mountains that run that are in, in the ocean. And some information that we can give the students too is that actually one of the longest ridges is the um, Mid-Atlantic Ridge that runs all the way from the Arctic to the Antarctic. Wow. Uh, that is 31,000 miles long. So do you, can you find where the students might locate uh, a mid-ocean ridge mm -hmm. on their worksheet? All right, now if this is the water line on the worksheet and here is like a mountain range below the water line, so I would say that this would be the ridge? And we would have the students label that. And then we would want them to also look at uh, another feature on this worksheet that they might not be familiar with, and that's a trench. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see something on there that they might locate as the trench? Mm -hmm. I think this right here represents like uh, a ditch, which would be a... A uh, smaller trench, perhaps, or vice and, versa. And tell the students that the, a trench is like a valley in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And so we would have them label that. Now that we've finished uh, looking at the features of the ocean floor, we want the students to be able to label the ocean floor. And we also want them then to look at the features above the water level, a continent, an island, and label those on our worksheet. We want to turn this one-dimensional illustration then into a model okay. and what it might look like as a three-dimensional figure. 
Before we begin building our model, mm -hmm. Johanna, we want the kids to be thinking about what features they want to include in their model. So we might want to list these on the board. So what are some features after we look at our worksheets that we want to make sure are included in our model? Okay, from this illustration, we see that they have labeled continent, ocean floor, mid-ocean ridge, trench, and island. So maybe all of these features should be part of the model. Okay, so after we've discussed those, we want those in our model, we're going to hand them out and tell them that they're going to get uh, something called uh, model magic that's a self-hardening clay. And it comes in a package like this. And when you take it out, the students are going to, each team of four are going to get about half of it. So you're just going to pull it apart like that. And it's, it's really easy to mold. So I'm going to give that to you in just a second. And then you also want them to have a, a blue washable marker and a, a plastic knife and foil tin to be able to build their model in. Okay. okay? Um, and also a piece of masking tape so that they can mark each group name on the so side of the, so group that they'll know who, right here right, the side. so they know who it belongs to. So I'm going to give this to you and let you start building the model. And, and as the students are doing this, they see that it's very pliable and um, you want to walk around and just kind of talk to them about some of the features and what those features might look like and how they might get that uh, you want it um, into their model. You also want them to think about where that water level might be on the side of their tin when they draw that at the end mm -hmm. so that they don't have their ridges, tall, their mid-ocean ridges, taller than the land masses mm -hmm. or even taller than their islands. So they need to be thinking about that. It's pretty easy to work with, isn't it, Johanna? Yeah, it, it really is. It's pretty pliable. Uh, you know, they can stretch it uh, both ways to kind of fill it in, but if they keep kind of keep in mind that maybe they want this end to be uh, the, the continental cr uh, crust, uh, or actually the, uh, that would be like the... Um, the land. The land, the land mass. Okay, mm -hmm. so it, what they might end up with Maybe something that looks like this, mm -hmm. where they have the land mass, they have an island, and they have mid ocean ridges, mm -hmm. and they have a trench. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right, so okay. You, let's. I you did a pretty good job in a short amount of time there. And you also want to work with your students so that everybody gets a chance to do this, mm -hmm. so that one student isn't doing all, having all the fun. This is a good model. So w where would we draw the water line for this then if we okay, want? Okay, we want the land uh, mass, the con uh, continent, to be above the water line. So what I think we'll do is just maybe make their water line here. Uh, we have to keep in mind that uh, the uh, island should be above the water level too. Okay, but the continental crust uh, the um, uh, and the trench and the uh, ridges should be below the water line. Good, thank you. Do you think this is a good model? Mm -hmm. I think that's the volcano or the island, and I see a ridge here, and this must be the trench right there. How did we, do we use the knife to make the trench? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think this is a good model of um, Yeah, the it ocean really crust? is. It's, it's very realistic because we have all of these features in it that we want. So it is a good model. It represents exactly what we want them to build. Have the students set their models aside to dry overnight. Have them wash their hands and rinse and dry the plastic knives and return them to the kit. In session two, the next class day, have the students retrieve their models. Give each team of four a paintbrush, a plastic cup, or other container of water for rinsing the brush, and several different colors of tempera paint. Have the students paint the models so that the ocean floor can be distinguished from the continents. Notice the island is green because it is above the water line. A museum walk around the room would give the students time to see other models. For cleanup, dispose of the paint and cups of rinse water and store the models for use in Activity 7. Guide the students through the reading of pages two through five in the Delta Science Reader.